Welcome back to another episode of Black Caution. I am Joshua Washington, and as always, I want to invite you all to participate in this real conversation that the fellas are having, all right? So with no further ado, let's get into it. Black Caution. Welcome back, and we have made it to the end, gentlemen. Finally. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> y'all don't know, we've been here a while, but it's, it's been good stuff. And, and we are coming around the last lap. We got a few more topics that I want you all to kind of throw around. But first, we did this a few segments ago, but I think we should go back to my boy Fred, because we've been talking about some heavy conversations, and I want to lighten it up. So we're going to take a question from Fred, all right? Fred in the nine dollar chain. Let's see what he got, bro. You got a question for us? Fred? Nine dollar. I don't think I Ready took one out. Nine dollars. I don't think I took one out. Fred says, "Is it true, all black neighborhoods have a candy lady?" Absolutely. Oh yes. <laughs> Let the church say yes. 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 Wait, 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 hold on. What, what's she selling though? Oh, Lollipops, I, hot sauces, pickles, come on, pickles, freeze cups. What they mm. call them? Uh, Not we yours. call we call them Lily Dilly. Yeah, Lily Dilly. Dilly. Lily Dilly. 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 Whatever it's called. She Woo. got she got cookies, nachos. So is, is it really the hood if you ain't got a candy lady? Nah, no, it's not. No. The hood. They, they <laughs> no, you got to knock on that back door. It's not yeah. on the window. It's not certified if you it, and now you got no candy ladies taking cars now too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wait, ca- not cars, cash app. Cash app. Come they, on, they bro. Tapping and everything. Come yeah. on, reach a high platform. Come on. It, but it has inflation caught up with the candy lady though. Is absolutely. It, is it still yes. twenty five? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Ain't never twenty five cents. Bro, y'all remember like, the Star Crunch? Come on, bro. Twenty five cents. Twenty. Come on. Now how much? Now how much they cost? Huh? About a dollar fifty. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> but yeah. the same size, yeah. too. Yeah, bro. The same size. The size ain't 50. increased, but the yeah. inflation got through. Nah, it's it's crazy. Man. But you can get a good deal if it says expired on it. Yeah. No, I don't know where your candy lady is. <laughs> we ain't, sucks, we about to cut. <laughs> <laughs> my candy lady should tell you quick. I ain't got, she ran out. See, but yeah, we got to understand now, the candy lady's got food right. stamps. Right. Listen, yeah. we, about, we about to call the FDA on his candy lady. <laughs> she, she got out of order uh, products, bro. <laughs> Y'all I'll trip, be like, bro. oh, baby, I didn't see that. Oh, okay, I'll give it to you for 50 cents. All right, cool. I'll take it. <laughs> Ms. Johnson, why, why is it sticking to my teeth? <laughs> right. That's why you be too scared to come back, because she already knew. You know what I'm that stuff still? She's too scared to come back. Lady smart. She waits till Halloween to act like she a part of the trick or treating team, so she can get that candy and resell it. Oh, it's funneling. Oh, That's it, bro. Oh, wow. That's how I never thought there. about that. That's a hustle, bro. Not reporting them dollars. Not hustle. She got hustle. food stamps. Hustle. Hard. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna y'all think the candy lady paying in taxes. Nothing. Man, nothing. <laughs> That's tax free. All right, so we gonna stop talking about that then. Oh, yeah, we ain't yeah. trying to put you like, like, like the Chinese. So sorry. Ain't trying to boil your hustle. Don't give me. No. <laughs> Just don't get me started with uh, authorities around. <laughs> okay, so I, I had I had to do that, man. Cause we've been we've been having some some real conversations, so I had to, we had to throw that one in there. So shout out to the candy lady. If your hood ain't got a candy lady, then that, there's a job opportunity. One from is called the storehouse. Hey, shout out to Fred with that question, okay. dog. What? Fred had that Fred, good I'm question. Fred been holding down, bro. Yeah, Y'all can give it up to Fred. Come on, Fred. Fred, $9 chain. Freddy, Freddy, Fred. Fred is the man. But this last conversation, uh, I really, I've been looking forward to this because y'all been kind of hitting at it a little bit all through the whole season. And I want to hear more about this because I'm curious how many of you up here either had a relationship or knew your, your, your biological father? Raise your hand. So, two, two out of four. Had a relationship. Now, what was that relationship like? Was it, tell us, what was that like? 
Oh, I, you know, I was going to let you start off. Uh, you know, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Disrespectful. <laughs> Get them out of here, Dub. <laughs> um, but nah, you know, my relationship with my father was kind of weird. Even though at the age of three he left, um, it's almost like I was that I was that child of grace because I taught my father how to forgive himself mm. and and it's amazing that I and I talk about this today to the young man that, that I mentor I say hey my father mistakes mentors me today you know through the conversations we've had even six months before he passed away it was probably the most realest conversation I've ever had and my father asked for forgiveness on a deeper level as a father. And I recognized at that moment that, you know, I'm blessed because I have mentors who I can turn to when it comes to marriage. When me and my wife decide to have kids, you know, uh, how to be a better father. He didn't have that. All he knew was my granddad who had 27 to 30 kids. Mm. So he came, he came from that environment. So you remember, your environment produces who you are if you're not careful on how you manage yourself coming out of it. So my father in our relationship, a lot of people, even my mother would always say, you know, why is it that you're going to see your father a lot? He's not living here, he's over there. For me, I always, I always looked at my father like, man, I love this guy. I don't know what he's going through, but I'm gonna pursue him. And me pursuing, pursuing him made him stop and turn and look at me. And at that moment in his life, he decided to change his ways and changing his ways led him to Christ out of the things that he was dealing with. And that's why I tell people, you gotta be careful how you want people to come to, come to Christ because he died going into Christ. And that was a blessing for me. So that relationship with my father was just, it was weird, but it ended off in a great way. And it has, it has, it has taught me how to deal with other young men. Have patience, pursue them at all costs. You never know what they're going through and just allow yourself to grow into them so you can see what your life can do to help benefit them. How about you, Ryan? Um, for me, I knew my father. Um, relationship was, I don't really know how to describe it because he'll come down, hang out with us for a few, then back to New York. Um, this was like an ongoing thing. Um, I see him one year, won't see him for the next four, see him again, won't see him for the next three. So it was just like an off and on thing. Um, but I think I, I started to become very angry with him for the simple fact that I was like, I'm your child, why aren't you here? Yeah. Um, me playing sports, it, it, was, it, was, it, it kind of messed with me psychologically because at the end of sports games, everybody would go with their parents. Yeah. And I was the only child there without a parent. I'm, I'm the captain of the, the basketball team. Like, I'm, I'm the ish. Like, everybody knows me. And while everybody's going with their family, I'm grabbing my book bag and going back to the locker room. Like, let me get up. I don't, I don't want to be around this. And that right there kind of, you know, built up this anger towards him. And a couple of years before he passed away, like, I reached out to him, like, just having a real conversation. Like, hey, Pops, like, why, why you wasn't in my life, man? Like, what, what, what? And the first thing he did, he told me, it was because of your mom. And when I heard that, only thing I seen was red. I'm like, bro, are you serious right now? Like, my, my mom took care of me. Like, what are you talking about? Like, that's not how you're going to start this conversation. And, and I just lost it. I'm like, bro, if I see you, I'm going to put my hands on you. Like, because that's, that's, that's not what I want to hear. I'm just asking you, this why you weren't here. Like, I would think if I had my child, I would want to be there and, you know, see him grow. And it was just like, man, your mom kept you away from me, this, this, and that. I'm like, bro, if you want to see your child, you're going to do whatever it takes to see him. Yeah. So... Long story short, short um, he ended up having a massive heart attack wow. and left, left him out in a vegetable state. Um, so hospital bound, and I think he was that way for about two years. And in my spirit, I was like, I'm going to go see him. I'm going to go let all this stuff out. I'm just going to, you know, just call it quits and just, you know, whatever, let it be. Um, the day I decided to, you know, just go, go check him out, he passed away. So he passed away, um, I think it was on Father's Day, passed away. Wow. Hmm. Wow. So it, it was tough. It was tough because I, I felt like I didn't get to release what I had inside of me. I felt like he created this, and I wasn't able to go by his bedside and tell him, like, bro, this is what you did. This is what you created. This is why 
I mean, I'm always in search of, you know, different things and, and different women and all that because of this. This is this is how it affected me. And from that that type of atmosphere or relationship, it it really taught me how to, you know, just let things go. You, you just gotta put it in God's hand. I know we hear it and I know it's like so cliche, like just put it in God's hand, but you really have to put it in his hands and trust and believe that he's putting you in that situation for something better. Because now I can yeah. say I'm the best father for my kids. Yeah. Like no matter what, I learned from his mistakes. I, I w- that, that image of him taught me what not to be. And, and, I, and as I started to unravel, I found out he's that way because of his father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was like, wow, okay. And I started to like, I got I, this is what he was brought up in. You know, seeing my grandfather, you know, different women and, you know, kids all over the place and this, this and that. It was a trickle effect of what he was exposed to. So he didn't really have grasp on how to be a man and, you know, how to be a father. He was just going with the flow. Yeah. So I had to come to, you know, I had to realize, like, hey, man, it, it wasn't him. Wow. Oh, that's good. Wow, man. Appreciate you sharing that, Ron. T. <laughs> it's non-existent for me. I don't know who my dad is. And I'm probably to say it. I'm not ashamed of it. Um, it did have an effect on me a lot throughout my life because I don't look like my other siblings. My older two brothers are a little darker, and my younger two brothers, are, my younger sister and brother, are a little on the pale side, so to speak. So I'm just stuck in the middle. So I always dealt with that, going back and forth, and you know, who's your dad type thing. Wow. And come to find out. I don't have the same dad as either one of them. So I never really had, I never really, I don't know, I don't know who my dad is basically. So I've been, so that's his fault. I'm pretty sure he knows I exist somewhere. And that's another conversation we can dive into. I don't want to get into it, but at the same time, it's that, it's going to, it's his loss. That's why I said earlier, I'm glad I didn't grow up without my dad because I don't want to, I want his burdens or whatever thing he was dealing with to rub off on me. Right. So I became a, man, a better man than who I am because he wasn't there. So that's how I look at it. Look at the glass half full, not, not half empty. That's real, man. Yeah. And that, that's that's my story too. I um I never know my I've never known my biological father. So I remember one time, bro. I was sitting in some place. I think it was like some restaurant. I can't remember the name. But I'm sitting there and I'm eating, bro. And this was way before I just before I got married, before I had my my son. And I'm sitting there eating and I'm I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching a dad and his son have like lunch together, bro, and they having a great time. I mean, he, he's standing up, he's laughing, he's having a good time, and I literally broke down right there in that restaurant. Oh. Literally like eating, bro, because I'm thinking to myself like, yo, why didn't my dad mm-hmm. do that? Why? Yeah. Ron, you hit it like, there's nothing that can stop me if my wife said today, you're going to never see your son again. What? Okay. I, 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 go, I go through that brick wall. I mean, listen, listen. <laughs> and, and there, there's no, there's, there's no way, yeah. bro. I don't, yeah. I don't even have kids, and, and I get offended when I hear that. If somebody said that to me now today, I, I'll like try to punch him in the yeah, face bro, or something. Yeah, bro, because I, like, I, sat, I sat there, bro, and I'm like, man, I, I wish. And there's something that, to your point, Tim, maybe, maybe you, you and I can relate to this because I didn't realize it was there because I never had a longing for, for a father in that way. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I'm thankful I had a stepfather that stepped in and, and, and filled that gap. But I didn't even know there was like a gap for my biological father until I saw that. And I'm like, man, because it, it hurts and it pushes at your value. Because you start to think, man, I wasn't good enough for this person who I was his seed mm-hmm. to think, you know, I should hang around and take care of that. That cuts deep, bro. Yeah. But then, Dub, I also look at too, like, Having a real conversation with my father made me realize the behavior of my mother that really pushed him away. And I think sometimes we place the burden on that individual person. And they say, it's safe for me to be at a distance than to be locked up. And now you have to look at two different parts of me. The space that I'm in, which is prison, or the distance of knowing that I exist, but I can't be in the same space because of 
Because sometimes women can drive you to that point to where what if there was an argument one day and it was so bad that he killed you and your mother, right? When my dad was, with my dad, I remember me, so I was recording this video before my dad died and he was asking my mother for forgiveness and I showed my mother the video and I saw things out of her that made me realize what my dad was saying was true. Being stubborn, not listening, not having respect. Because, you know, us men, we don't ask for just love. Our primary thing is respect. Mm -hmm. The minute that woman disrespects you, what happens to you? We out. Yeah, 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 we, we out, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's out. no excuse to why they are a distance away. But my father going through the phase of his death made me realize that there was something in my mother that had not died yet. Mm. That made my father not want to be a part of us. Because he knew that it would be a safe place for him to keep his peace mm. than to bring domestic violence into the home. Because we know that domestic violence, once we see it, we react to it in our own relationships. Mm. Yeah, you either hate it or you embrace it. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I think sometimes our parents have to speak to us and tell us the truth of why this person is not in our life. Mm. Because if they hide it, and they try, to use, they try to hide it to protect us, they're damaging us. Yeah, they don't, because don't then, do once again, our perception towards that individual person, we come off aggressive when a person's like, whoa, all you heard was one side of the story. Thanks. You didn't hear my side. Mm -hmm. Or let's sit down and talk about at this age, let's sit down with Joshua, let's sit down with Ron, let's sit down with T at this age and really explain to them what happened between our relationship. You don't see that in a black home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that, though. I think, that's, I think what, what you're hitting on is truth. And I think there's there's a there's a lot to be said about that. But speaking from the perspective of a son, right. I don't care what happened That's between, real. between you you and moms because y'all are adults, and so it's your responsibility to keep the child shielded away from that. Mm -hmm. And y'all figure out whatever you want to do. Figure out you know the whole how I hear co-parenting is a thing. But when it comes to the point where I know in my case and like in T case where I can't even I can't even go to the, I go to the doctor and they ask me, do you have any of this in your family yeah, history? I'm, I'm, you don't and even I, know. And I'm like, it's like, whoa. Yeah. It's like, it just brings it all back up again. Yeah, it's yeah. like, man, I, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what I don't know. I don't even know what traits I have. Right. I don't know if this skill set of being able to play this and do this came Comes from that, that person. Right. And so it just creates this, I, I, I agree, we should, yeah. we should have those conversations and they should happen. But I think when a father just completely goes MIA, yeah. man, that, that damage can almost be irreparable, man. And, and, could you, and maybe, maybe we could say it like this. When he has a choice to come back and he doesn't come back, mm -hmm. that's a different statement than a person who doesn't have a choice to come back. And if it does come back, it either ends up with domestic violence or going to jail. Yeah. So I, I think I think those two those two situations change because that can lead into a conversation of child support. Yeah. Yeah. And that could. And you can yeah. you can have a relationship. You can still have a relationship with your with your son. Yeah. If, if you are not with the mo a mother of your child. And I've seen yeah. it happen. Um, I think I think it's possible. But to what the point that we're hitting on here, man, I, I think what you all are uncovering is that when dads aren't around. Yep. Or not as highly involved or not healthily in a healthy way. It, it, it does damage, man. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the main point that I'd, I'd love for y'all to expand on yeah. a little bit. I, I think it's, and don't get what I'm saying wrong, I think it was necessary for our generation to go through what we've been through with, you know, without having a father and all that stuff because now you see an influctuation of our generation directly, slowly directed to the kids. Like, we mm -hmm. are so Ooh. in tune with the kids now. Like, it's crazy because it broke that curse between not having a dad. Now these, these up and coming kids, they're gonna, oh, yeah, I had my dad, I had my mom, they co-parent or they was together, but now they're gonna, like, like our generation, we are physically there. We're here, hey, I love you, son. Kissing them, like for me, just having my son and like, hey, I love you, bro. Yeah. He's telling me back, I love you too. Like, okay, that's, that's it right there because I never had that experience. So I'm gonna give you every experience that I think you deserve that's gonna help you. And you're gonna be able to teach this to your kids. Because now this is regular in our household of, of right. a, a black man taking his son, I love you, holding his hand, you know, just being his first of everything. Like, hey, bro, this is what it is. Now he's going to take that like, okay, my dad did this with me. I need to do it with my kids. So right. now it broke that generational curse that, that started with, with us. And now it's just like, okay, every, hopefully, every generation that comes after us is going to have that father figure directly impactful in their lives from here on out. Yeah, I think it's good, man. What you think, T? 
for the most part, when in situations like that, just like you said, be open with your kid. Don't tell them, oh, I'm doing it to protect you. You're not protecting them. You're actually hurting them even more because the fact of un not knowing hurts more than knowing because now you know that he's not there. Now you have a reason why. If you don't know, you spend too much time and energy and it distract you from the things you're trying to focus on and you spend the energy on something that it's not even relevant that you don't need to be focused on because you're just a kid. Who's 10 and, 8, 10 and 12 years old, you got a math test, and you focus on why dad is not going to be at home for dinner tonight. That's crazy. And you got to pass his test to pass his class at 10 and 12 years old. That's crazy. So so with that, as we wrap this up, man, and again, y'all y'all have just been amazing, man, sharing. But I want to know, I want to kind of leave on a high note. There's a lot going on in our communities. We, we talked about the absence of fathers in homes. Uh, I didn't even get into all the, the statistics that's showing that there are a lot of single parent homes. Um, and we want to see more of what Ryan, you were talking about, of, of fathers being in the gap and, and actually stepping in and, and playing that role. I want to know, what can we do? What can people leave with from, from this series? What can we do as black men to help in our community to change a lot of the narratives and a lot of the other, you know, chains of cursing that we're seeing uh, what, what can we do to, to, to make it better man I, I think honestly it's just i think we all are in a situation where we're so busy and we get caught up with life i think just taking it taking it a step back you know dedicating time to you go back to whatever neighborhood or whatever you come from and, and show and just be, being a kid again putting yourself out there to you know go go hang out with the kids you know see what they're going through build those type of relationships because I think once we start to bridge that gap um, with, 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 the, with the youth, I, I think it's going to catapult the, the next level of men that's going to be built up. But just taking our time, taking time out from my busy schedule. Like, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm going to go back to the inner city. I'm just going to hang out, go play ball with the kids. You know they're going to be hanging out the court, the football field. But just being there, being present, and, and them seeing that you're do um, dedicating your time to them, yeah. It's, it's, that's dope stuff, man. Yeah. We just got to take that time out. Well, we yeah. got to drag some of these kids out of the house because when I go back <laughs> home, point. when I go back home, we used to be on the courts that we used to play on all the time. There's, It's like desert town out there. Like, nobody's outside. Yeah. I don't <laughs> see anybody outside. No, but that's a good point, yeah. though. They, they, they were messing with me earlier about uh, a few years ago. I, I, would, I would always be hard to get in touch with. Like, Rams would hit me up, and I, I wouldn't pick up. But a lot of that is because a lot of that, those issues in the home, I had a huge isolation problem. Mm. And I would isolate mm. and not want to talk to anybody right. because I just wanted to be alone. Like I, mm. I grew up, I, I kind of perfected this art of being disconnected. And I think to your point, see, I think there's a lot of young men who are, they're disconnected. Mm. And then they've, they've, they're mm. perfecting that art of being isolated. And if you don't drag them out of the house and say, hey man, I care about you. I want to go do this with you. Wow. You're right, bro, you miss out on so much. Wow, yeah. huge. What else? Um, I, I would say, to help the youth understand that what what is a father figure right change the narrative just because just because you came from a place doesn't mean that someone who's mentoring you is not your father they're loving you they're investing in you they believe in you they speak affirmation to you you know i think i think we need to help the community to understand that we are the fathers you know we bring something to the table that this child who feels abandoned will be able to understand that we have more to give than what your biological father is not giving you. Thanks. You know, just because that's your biological father, that doesn't take away from how I'm investing in you. Don't look at the negativity of what you're dealing with. Look at the positive, as look at the positive situations that are in front of you and make judgment off that rather than the negative situation that you've been dealt with. Mm. Because, of course, we all are not dealt with the same hand but doesn't mean that you can't win the game. Absolutely. It's just all about who's teaching you how to play the game. That's who you gotta focus on. Anybody knows about success. If you want to build that success in the industry that you're in, then you find a mentor who's done it. Right. And that's the father figure we need to paint in our community today to really help the youth understand that you still have value in you, despite of who created you, I mean, despite of who, who made you, mm -hmm. you still have that, 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 that love in you that somebody like us are willing to take time to invest in to build the community. And you know, that's an, un that's an unintended uh, direction, man. I didn't even plan on going there, but it sounds like what you all are saying is, one thing we can do is take more of an active role mm -hmm. as fathers in the community, even yes. if you don't have kids, but, but really filling in that gap for a lot of our, our young uh, men and some of the young women who don't have that in yes. the community. 
So I think we're going to wrap it there, man. This has been just an awesome. Before you do. Shout out to all my coaches that, <laughs> shout out, that picked me up. Shout out, shout out to everybody at the Boys yes. and Girls Club who, who invested their time in at the YMCA. Y'all know yeah. who you are. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to everybody who connected to me, and, I, and I'm a living proof of it. Yeah. So thank you all for uh, having my back and pushing me forward. Yeah, yeah. Anybody yeah. else want to, you know, I, I appreciate that. T, anybody else, uh, final words before we, I wrap this thing up? Yeah, dude, shout out to your mom. I remember eighth grade, I was coming across the street to go work out at the gym. And she pulled me to the side as I'm walking. She said, Ram, I know your father's not here. Your mother's always working. And she said, but the way you carry yourself as an individual person and how you and my son have a relationship, I'm just happy that you're a part of our family. And I remember I didn't know where I was going to college because in my head I had Juilliards, New York. I didn't know the calls or nothing. But she took me, she signed me up for school and said, you're going to the same school my son going to. That's and true. she said, I want to be able to make sure that you're good. So your mom was that father figure that helped direct my life into where I am today. Because yeah. if I wasn't in Orlando, I probably would have been somewhere else, you know, because we had that accountability relationship. Yeah. But with, with that father figure uh, uh, mentorship, and like I said, it wasn't even a, a man that told me. It was a woman. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So once again, it's that father figure perspective. That's why I carry that a lot because why did God use her instead of a man to lead me where I needed to be? Mm. So shout out to Mrs. Washington for that. Yeah, shout out to you, mama. And, 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 all, and all the other moms <laughs> yes. out there who, who are holding down, <laughs> right. who are holding down multiple roles, man. That's, that's, real. that's, a, that's a real thing. Right? Yep. You got anything before we had it? No, I just want to give a shout out to everybody on the panel, man. Just being open. Um, honest and transparent with everybody, man. I, I think this is something huge. I think we created a culture to where it's cool to be vulnerable. Yeah. And I think the people who, who who's gonna watch this, they're really gonna take away a lot of value and stuff that they can apply instantly into making sure that they have a successful life. Yeah. I just wanna give a shout out to you guys, man, for being my brothers, man. You know, we go way back. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. <laughs> right. Nah, yeah. you know, <laughs> I ain't all that. Nah, I ain't no, 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 that's real though. But listen, I, I, I wanna thank all of you all for, for saying yeah. yes, man, because y'all said yes immediately. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't hesitation. No hesitation, yeah. Y'all no said, pump faking. Yeah, y'all said yeah. yes uh, immediately. No, absolutely no pump faking. Yeah. So I appreciate you, man, and I, and I second that, Ron, man. Uh, there, there are more men like you in the community, and I, I'm just honored to be able to give some exposure to that, man, and let people see that. So that's it for us, man. We've been here for, for far too long. We're going to get on up out of here, but I hope you enjoyed this season. If you did, please make sure you like, sub subscribe, uh, let us know, and we'll probably do this again. You never know, all right? So we want to hear from you if you got some value out of this. But until next time, we'll see you on behalf of, of T, uh, Rambo, and Ron. I'm Joshua, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, man. Real men, real talk, black caution. Peace. Hey, listen, thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss an episode. We want you to participate in this real conversation, all right? So we'll see you next time. Black Caution.